This is Talk Radio. With um, haggis all over my face, it's Sean Bolger tonight between now and 9 on uh, Talk Radio. 10.53 and 10.89 a.m. This part of the programme, we're celebrating Burns Night with haggis, bagpipes, and now a Caledonian King, Scotty McClue, joins me from Edinburgh. Scotty, good evening. Good evening, Sean. And uh, a very happy Burns Night to you. Very nice to talk to you. A very happy Burns Night to you and to the rest of the United Kingdom. Now tell me, uh, Scotty, what is all the hoo-ha about Burns Night? Well, it's not really hoo-ha. You see, down south you've got Shakespeare and all the rest of it. Now, Burns makes Shakespeare look like a dull Sloan. <laughs> you know, few, few <laughs> men have done anything for any country. What Robert Burns has done for Scotland is a favourite quote. And the freedom-ringing songs of Burns have without doubt helped to build the great British Empire. That was the governor of Nova Scotia at the time. But, uh, I mean, his works haven't sold quite as well and, and aren't uh, performed to and listened to quite as much as Shakespeare, are they? Now, excuse me, that's a ridiculous <laughs> thing to say, Sean. I mean, this man is the most popular poet in the world. <laughs> You know? Now, Shakespeare, we got rammed down our throat at school, but that's because bums didn't get a look in. Had we got bums, we'd all be singing and dancing. Now, does Burns have a look in these days in, in, in Scottish schools? Oh, yes, absolutely. Wonderful stuff. Absolutely. All right, well, listen, tell me what's happening in uh, in Edinburgh tonight and, uh, and all around Scotland. What are people doing? Because there's, there's quite a, a big tradition of, of the ceremony of Burns Night, isn't there? Yes, yes. Very, very many Burns suppers going on round uh, Scotland tonight. And certainly in Edinburgh, of course, some of the biggest ones. In Greenock, in the west of Scotland... Um, they had the biggest bum supper in the world today. Mm -hmm. How so many people were at that? Oh, just everybody that was going into the shopping mall um, was given tatties and neeps and haggis and all the rest of it. So I think they were going to uh, hopefully make the Guinness Book of Records. Now, what's all this business about addressing the haggis? Ah, well, you have to address the haggis, you see. Uh, the gentleman there was telling you a good bit of what was in it. Um, you know, a lot of sheep's pluck, liver, lungs and heart, suet, mm. seasoning, onions, boil it up. Many of the butchers, of course, guard the recipe for it, Sean. This uh -huh. is the problem. The haggis makers have their own secrets, you see. I will no be telling you. <laughs> it's all that sort of thing, you know. Some people actually prefer the calf's liver for its stronger flavour and the pork fat, of course, for a little bit of moistness, because you don't want the haggis too dry. Uh, but the the thing about Burns, he, um, as uh, Patrick was saying earlier, he saw that the, the humblest of things as something to write about. He was certainly the representative of the common man. I suppose he was really an early socialist. Is, he, is, is the piece that people actually say to the haggis, uh, the Burns supper, is that, is that a set piece every year? Yes, that's a set piece. They address to the haggis. Burns wrote it himself, and he talks about uh, what, what would happen is the haggis will be piped in with the bagpiper. I hear you've got one down at Top Radio UK there. We have. Uh, uh, you know, pipe in the haggis and everybody stands to receive the haggis. This is, um, you know, the most wonderful thing under the sun when in comes this mixture of oatmeal and sheep's guts. And uh, <laughs> I, have to, I have to say, as, as a girly southerner, I mean, what's in it doesn't bear thinking about, but it tastes oh, fantastic. Oh, it tastes absolutely gorgeous. And I, uh, I take issue with the gentleman that covered it in red wine. Um, he can thank his lucky stars. I He's didn't cover it in red wine. I was drinking red wine with it. Ah, oh, well, that's all right. We'll let you off for that then, because well, you get not bad red wine. But, I mean, a dash of whiskey on it, of course, just brightens the whole idea up. Oh, I think you're right, yeah. Now, Scotty, mm. are, you off to, uh, are you off to a supper tonight yourself? Yes, I shall be I shall be going to a bum supper tonight and uh, sitting down and tucking into the neeps and the haggis and all that sort of thing. Now, tell me, uh, you've prepared a poem for us this evening. Yes. I would very much like to hear this. What's it called? Well, I, I, I will do that for you in just a second. There's, there's two things I have to tell you. is just about the address to the haggis. Yes. There's the piper and then there's the man with the ski and do, which means means the black knife. Oh, yeah. And, of course, he plunges it into the to the haggis. So the poem begins, uh, Fair for your honest, sonsy face, great chieftain of the pudding race, or the puddin' race, as we say. Uh -huh. And uh, then, of course, he, he plunges the knife into the haggis, rips the guts out of yeah. it, up comes the wonderful smell that everybody just faints at. <laughs> at least I think it's the smell they're fainting at. And uh, then he says, <laughs> ah, warm reeking, when he can smell the guts of the haggis. All right, run those first couple of lines past me again. I mean, what do they mean? Fear for your honest, sonsy face. The haggis is a very honest creature. Right. You know, there it is lying there, and its face is very sonsy, you know, full of meal and full of honest 
cheer and toil of the land, good yeoman stock. <laughs> All right, well, th thank you for putting us right on that. Have you got now? Have you got another uh, another poem for us? Yes, I've got a little a little poem, um, which uh, uh, I thought I might just say to you, and uh, then give you a tiny tune for the second bit, if I may. Oh, if you want, uh, yeah, just to let you know, because it's nice to have a wee song and buns. Oh, right, you do it. it, yeah, go ahead. Right, well, this this one is all the earths the wind can blow, so all round the world the wind blows. Of all the earths the wind can blow, I dearly like the west, for there the bonny lassie lives, the lass I love the best. There's wild woods grow, and rivers row, and many a hill between, but day and night my fancy's flight is ever with my jean. I see her in the dewy flowers, I see her sweet and fair, I hear her in the tune for birds, I hear her charm the air. There's not a bonny flower that springs by fountain, shaw or green. There's not a bonny bird that sings, but reminds me of my Jean. That's quite beautiful, actually. Well done, thank quite you, Scotty. That's, that's that's very good indeed. And uh, as you say, you had something, you had a, a tune as well. No, I was just going to give you the tune. I'll just give you one, because I don't want the nation switching off. Well, nor do I. Because so, <laughs> <laughs> I know they're all there, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so it just goes like this, just to show you the simplicity of the music that goes with so many bum songs, Sean. Of all the earths the wind can blow, I dearly like the worst. For there the bonny lassie lives, the lass I love the best. There's wild woods grow, and rivers row, and money a hill between. But day and night, my fancy's flight is ever we, my jean. And by that point, everybody is absolutely pashed, as we see in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> and the tears are streaming down the faces, and they're applauding and all the rest. Yes, right. they're applauding through the window here. Uh, yeah, it's looking good. Yes, <laughs> and it's early in the evening, we'll so applaud I'll, here. I'll be lucky to get out alive after it, you know. <laughs> Scotty, listen, I now understand that, that Burns liked the ladies, and it said he died from a, a sexually transmitted disease. I mean, oh, I, if... I think you're pushing your luck. Do you think so? <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. I, I bow to your knowledge, Doctor. If he actually, he actually, he died of uh, endocarditis. Oh yeah. Um, you know, which is, uh, is is a heart condition induced by rheumatism. All right then. And he was buried in Dumfries. Now I'll just tell you very quickly about that. You must tell me to shut up if I'm boring you. No, here, no, but, please carry but, on. Um, you know, <laughs> he was buried in Dumfries. Now he owed a few quid to all the locals by that time. You know, to the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker, and they hadn't quite paid his debts and um, he said aye aye you'll get your money because by this point he was enjoying a good refreshment and and uh, you know the company of the locals and what have you so what they did at first believe it or not and I will probably be taken to the Tower of London and hung drawn and quartered for seeing this <laughs> but the folk of Dumfries were only that proud of him so they buried him in the in the local midden in the toon heap <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's what they did with poor old Buns. And then a few days later, they thought, here, what have we done? So they dug him up, and his head had rolled away from his body, and his hair was pure white. Oh. So they got a bit of a panic that, you know, they'd incurred <laughs> the wrath of the devil, and they dusted poor old Buns down and uh, gave him a decent Christian burial. Well, yeah. listen, Scotty, finally for now, if, if he were asked, how do you think he'd like to be remembered? As representative of the common man, as a man whose works and whose philosophies are as current today as they actually were then. He talked of the, the fact that the aristocracy had sold Scotland out um, all these hundreds of years ago, were bought and sold for English gold such a parcel of rogues in a nation. The uh, English gold was the money that the aristocracy received for saying, look, we'll, uh, we'll kowtow any risings from these rough Scots, and uh, the parcel of rogues in the nation was the aristocracy. Of course, that's all changed nowadays. Would he, would he be a supporter of the SNP? Um, I think he probably would. He would have made a great politician because there would have been stacks of sleaze there for the tabloids. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, listen, thanks ever so much for being with us tonight. Lovely a, to talk to you. Have John. a fantastic Burns night. God bless you, mate. And uh, enjoy the haggis and the knife and the, and the music and the poems and, and all that goes with it. <laughs> Scotty McClure on the line from uh, Edinburgh.